All right, so I'm gonna try and give everyone an idea of what kind of wiring you need for this. Um, so this is kind of hard to see, but this one wire is going to the ground. Um, this wire right here is the signal wire. So that comes from the front repeater. Um, and that makes the yellow turn signal work. And then the last wire is connecting here and that diverts the old signal from the brake and turn signal, it's one wire, um, to this little tiny green resistor here. It's 260 ohms, 10 watts. And that's to stop the fast flash. The fast flash. So if you don't have that, the turn signal will flash very rapidly. Um, so all wired up. All I really do is run that one wire all the way along this kick panel, super easy to remove. And then I eventually kind of just ran it through under the weather strip in here, which you can just kind of lift up. And that wire actually goes through, you can see it there, it's not very clean looking, but I mean, you only see you open the door. And that is just wired up to the repeater light. So I put my turn signal on here. <clears throat> Repeater light works as you'd expect. Front turn signal works as you'd expect. And then there's the amber turn signal. Let me just hop and get, I'll show you the other side too real quick. All right. <clears throat> there's the other one. And let me just show you guys the, uh, the brakes and uh, hazard lights here. I'll have to be creative here with this one. So there's the hazards on. So you can see the amber portion right here. That's the brake light. I'm gonna try and set my phone down so you can kind of see this when I go. So all in all, not a very hard wiring job. It just takes a little bit of wiring skill and it's pretty much the three wires you gotta modify in here. Well, it's really one wire that you cut and then one end has to go to a, a resistor. The other one has to go to the repeater. And then of course you have, you know, a tap into the ground. So actually it's really just affecting two of the wires. And same procedure on the other side here. I won't show it to you because it's the exact same, but again, I ran the wire along, kind of tucked it up through here. You can even kind of see it. Just a little bit of the wire there. Pick a black wire so it blends in. <coughs> and just ran it, kind of just tucked it and pulled a few panels to actually get at the repeater wire. You definitely need a bit of creativity, so what I recommend doing <clears throat> is turn your wheel all the way to the left if you're trying to get the, the left side, the driver's side, and then you have a little bit of room to work with. So, now you wanna do this. <clears throat> There's these two little push things. There's kind of plastic rivets, just pop them out. And then you can kind of reef this back and you can stick your hand up and you can get in. My car is really dirty right now, forgive me. You stick your hand right in and you can get access to this light. It's the first harness closest to the front. Just kind of reach around, pull that out. And it's the top wire. It's very obvious. There's a ground wire and a power wire. So you can figure it out pretty easily with the test light. <clears throat> and that's pretty much it. That's all you need to get EU turn signals on a North American car. Of course, you're willing to buy these EU spec assemblies. I paid uh, $250 for the set versus $260 US. 
I'm Canadian, so, you know, that's like $500 of Monopoly money. Um, but yeah, that's pretty much the whole thing. If you have any questions, just leave me a comment. And uh, yeah. <clears throat>